Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Today we are going over more history memes. So we got a good collection of here. Well, how this works is over on our Discord server, which is linked down below. Um, there's a place where you can submit history related memes. What happens is my mods, they go through some of them and put them into a channel where I can check them out and maybe just laugh at them, maybe give up some context or some story behind it. Either way, it's a lot of fun. We've been doing a few of these now. So if you're into this, uh, there are some other videos of me doing this. Just uh, check them out in my playlists. And before we begin, though, I uh, just want to uh, encourage uh, a couple things. Uh, one thing is I have just created a new Mr. Terry Gaming uh, channel. And I've done a lot of gaming stuff over this past nearly year of my, um, my channel existing. But I want to start moving... Uh, gaming content so that I, I do a lot of live streams um, maybe do some even some reaction videos i guess uh for maybe game trailers maybe do some of my own stuff i'm an avid game collector as you guys can see i could go through some of that stuff all kinds of fun gaming related things lists whatever and i'm going to be slowly transitioning to putting stuff over there so down below um is a link to my new gaming channel um you can click that link or just search on youtube mr terry gaming and hopefully we can do some fun stuff over there as well all right um with that too i think we'll go ahead and and get started so let's see what we got from the history community in the way of memes hopefully they are quite uh dank all right we'll start right here all right what do we got we got Pooh bear i always see that where it's like he's just chilling and then there's like the high class winnie the pooh um so we get that going there all right so the american revolution um okay so we got britain versus america and then you got uh, George Washington, King George, very, they're very high class, right? So <laughs> very nice. The intolerable King George, right? Which was um, who the Americans were going against in a way and were saying were tyrannical, you know, for the taxes and all that stuff. So, all right, good stuff. Good. I love, I love the, uh, the high class Winnie the Pooh. All right, what do we got here? We got German soldiers. We will wear dark gray camouflage. French soldiers, and he's all bright, family guy. So the the what they're going after on this one is it was said that uh, you know during like World War One, for example, you know in the old days, it didn't honestly matter that much what you wore in open battlefield because weapons were such where you had to be so close to each other that you uh you like it didn't matter what you're wearing because you, you basically had to see them so like soldiers would wear brighter colors and stuff like that bright red bright blue you know stuff like that and what was kind of the the knock was it was said that the french going to world war one uh, were still wearing some of this bright stuff but the problem was is that in world war one um you have more ranged uh, weaponry, right? Longer range artillery, longer range rifles, and you were very able to be seen. And the Germans wore more uh, uh, toned down colors. So that's what that is referring to. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Okay, so we got France. Or, or wait, wait, wait. It's to America. America talking. Okay, France, I can explain. And you got the Louisiana purchased by the French. The land is now worth $1.2 trillion, and you offered me only $15 million? The Alaskan purchase. Okay, so now you got the Russians. Um, you offered me $7.2 million for what is now worth $37 billion? And the Treaty of Guadalupe. You guys are getting paid. <laughs> so, good, refer <laughs> good references here. So, the uh, what's, what's happening here is... America purchased two big parts of land that made America basically what it is. Um, the whole middle third of what's today America uh, was owned by um, by the French. Okay, it was called Louisiana. And during the Napoleonic, uh, uh, the reign of Napoleon, Napoleon was needing more quick money to fight his war in Europe, and sold. To the Americans sold basically the whole middle third of what's today the United States for 15 million dollars which in the end has become this massive bargain because it essentially doubled the size of the United States so you can see how now it's worth you know trillions or whatever and then uh, same thing happened with Russia so Russia used to be in control of what today is Alaska okay which is 
Uh, look on a map if you don't know where Alaska is. Uh, and yeah, bought it for $7.2 million. And this maybe didn't seem as like as much uh, as good of a deal, you know, as something like Louisiana. But of course, it's worth a lot more now through what says it's $37 billion now. And a lot of that, especially when it was found in Alaska um, oil. So you get oil, and that just made Alaska super profitable there. Now, the Treaty of Guadalupe basically gave a bunch of territory after the Mexican-American War in the uh, uh, mid-1800s and basically took a lot of territory without having to really get paid much. There was some money transferred, but nothing like, of course, what was going on there. So this is Mexico being like, you guys are getting paid and feeling... Basically, like, they got screwed there. That's a good meme. That's a really good one. I like that. That's that's some, like, big brain stuff there. We, we like the big brain memes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Okay, Romulus. What should we name this great city? Remus. Ream. <laughs> Romulus, sharpening spear. I have a better idea. So the story here is great. This is about the founding of Rome. Uh, Rome was said to be founded by two brothers, Romulus and Remus. And part of the mythological story of this is that they were basically abandoned and raised by a wolf and that these two are the founders of it. And when naming the city, uh, they wanted to name it, you know, basically after themselves. Now, the story is that Romulus actually killed Remus. And that's where you get the word Rome from. Uh, is from him, from from Romulus, place of Romulus, I guess. So that's what that's going to like. Hey, which we name it? Rem- Remus is like, hey, it's named after me, Reem. Nope. We're... <laughs> Romulus is like, no, I'm gonna, we're gonna name it after ourselves. That's a good one. A sharpening spear. I got a better idea. You know, sharpening it. We're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna die. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. By the way, thank you mods for having nice big memes. Some of them were were small in the past. These are great. Much better for you guys, especially you mobile users. All right, historian. How on earth did all of these major Bronze Age civilizations collapse all around the same time? <laughs> the Sea People. Oh, we got some Jim Halpert. I love that stuff. So the Sea the, around, oh, uh, uh, just before 1000 BC, so a little bit earlier than that. There's what's called the Bronze Age Collapse. And it's super mysterious because you had a bunch of these great civilizations, like the Mycenaeans and a bunch of Mesopotamian ones in the New Kingdom of Egypt. And... Um, and in Egypt there, and they all collapsed within like 50 years or so of each other. It was crazy. And now what's been crazy about this is we don't know exactly why. There's a lot of theories, and the safe thing to do is say it's a bunch of things. And one of the things that gets brought up is that there seems to be the record of this invading group that came across the Med- came in the Mediterranean. And we still don't know exactly who those people were. Something was from more like mainland Europe, like north of Greece or something like that. Maybe they came from like more Italy or something like that. But they've just simply been referred to by historians as the sea people. That's because um, I think it's the Egyptians that called them that. And there was a bunch of warfare that end up collapsing. Now, we also think that there might be uh, a lot of that was disruption of trade or environmental things. But I love that it's just because we still don't know. It's actually one of the greatest mysteries that are currently plaguing the uh, uh, historical world is who exactly were these sea people that led to the collapse of these mighty empires and civilizations that e- existed all across the uh, eastern Mediterranean. So, great. And if it's anything with the office, I'm going to like it. <laughs> this way, hold on. Suggested and made by me. Also, my, uh, okay, Anubis, one of my mods, he made this. Mongols, you can't defeat me. Oh, we got some Avengers. Uh, you can't defeat me. Abbasids, I know, but he can. The Mamluks, yes. So the the Abbasids were the uh, empire in Persia, and the Mongols annihilated them pretty much. They pretty much annihilated in some of the most destructive warfare there had ever been. Look up the Siege of Baghdad, which is, especially in pre-modern terms, uh, although the Mongols are kind of modern, but like pre-World War, I should say, is uh, one of the most high, the highest casualty sieges and attacks that have ever happened in history. And the Mamluks, if you don't know them, they were uh, in Egypt. And that is where the Mongol expansion west stopped was by the Mamluks, who were, again, were control of, in control of Egypt. That's as far west, but that's pretty dang impressive, I like to say about that. The Mongols went all the way to Egypt 
and that's where they got stopped. And they went east all the way to Japan and were destroyed by a typhoon. Down south, they got stopped by um, the Vietnamese as the Mongols struggled to fight in a lot of the uh, more jungle-type areas because their horses weren't as advantageous then. But yeah, they went all the way west to Egypt who were the Mamluks. Good job, Anubis. I like it. I like it. Well done. Well done. All right, we got another one. Oh, wait, he says, he did he make these other ones, too? Okay, when Germany fights in a two-front war. Got Britain. Britain, Russia, France, and America are all showing up. Oh, is that... Is that the the me Is that the thing from the, the guys that are, uh... Is this the one with the, the, the casket and they're like dancing as they're like carrying the casket there? So they're all they're all getting like they're all ganging up on them. Is that kind of what's going on here? Because that's basically what's happening. Germany had to fight a two front war, but it, it, and, and it's two fronts. But it was also multiple nations because on the east, yeah, they're fighting the uh, the Russians and out west at, at one time, at least or at, at different times. They're fighting the British, the French and the Americans there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, no. It's me, you guys. It's me. Can I? How do I even make that face? Wait, I got. I can't turn my head right. Can't do it. <laughs> Third Reich, Nazi Germany. Ugh, Prussia. Yeah, people love Prussia. It's amazing. Prussia is like having a resurgence. I feel like people love it when they're learning about all the great. Um, Prussian rulers and stuff like that. Prussia, you know, doesn't exist because it gets incorporated into um, into Germany and parts of what it used to be is in Poland. Uh, when people talk about it in my class, I'm like, Prussia, just think of Poland and Russia. That's kind of around where they were, plus plus some Germany there. So, you know, Prussia. But yeah, I see Prussia is getting, it's like Prussia is getting a, a resurgence by, especially young history fans, it seems like. They're all into Prussia because they're finding out about all these great, you know, leaders, uh, Frederick and stuff. So, it's great. Okay. Oh no, have I, have I really become a meme now? Oh no. Okay, we got some other ones. Oh, he's actually citing who some of the people were that these were coming from. Uh, Photosynthesis, who's one of our supporters. Let me uh, see if I can make that, if I can zoom that in, because that one is a little bit smaller. Whoa, whoa we're changing the screen. All right, how do I do the thing? Oh, we're doing the thing. There we go. Okay. You're welcome, people. People are saying I should have done this before with the smaller ones. Belgium and Europe. Okay, it's all Thomas. It's nice and uh, it's nice and uh, uh, happy there. Belgium in the Congo. Oh, and you got Thomas who's just like dis destructive. And then you got Belgium in World Wars as a speed bump. This is great. I, I like this a lot. There's so much context here. Belgium and Europe, it's like this small nation who doesn't seem to be messing with anybody throughout Europe. They're a fairly new nation. Okay. Then you learn about Belgium and the Congo as they started the scramble for Africa. And um, especially under King Leopold were one of the most ruthless imperialists in Africa. Millions of people died under what was essentially slave labor for them extracting uh, rubber and things like that uh so it was brutal that's that's like yeah they, they it's pretty bad and it's gone swept totally under the table and then belgium and the world wars because belgium was basically a speed bump for germany in both world wars they invaded france through belgium both wars and went right through it eventually i mean they fought well the belgians but uh fought and then but made their way or, or the germans went their way through france this is great i like this a lot this is one of my favorite ones you guys have done so good job frodo cool cool all right what else from uh from garrett okay from our community stalin deciding out his war strategy here just in case because it's semi-small let's uh oh this one's okay let's back up hopefully this is better okay stalin deciding out his war strategy Okay, anyways, um, it doesn't matter how many of them die, there are always more. I don't know what this, the, the background, like the ba like the actual image is in reference to, but it's basically how it was. Stalin was not afraid to put people into harm's way in World War II fighting against the Nazis. That's why they basically have double the deaths of anybody. 
Um, and probably, you know, they, they probably had to to survive, you know what I mean? Which is crazy. But uh, how it was just not hardly a question. He would just throw people out there, even if they were uh, unequipped or untrained as much, or just if you know, they're civilians. It was like, no, you are going to go there. So, and ants, I don't know, is just because uh, I don't know this reference as much, but there are sure a lot of ants. There's, you kill them and there's always more. <laughs> that's, that's not wrong there. All right, what do we got? Panama, what have you, Panama, what have you done? Okay, so we got Teddy Roosevelt here as America. He's talking to Panama, who just shot someone. I don't want to let the U.S. build a canal, which is, uh, oh, which is Colombia. Yeah, so Panama, today you have Colombia, which is South America, but Colombia back then, they called the Gran Colombia, uh, it, or it, it, um, it extended through Central America, through the smaller isthmus, um, isthmus there and where Panama is. And what was happening is America, this is Teddy Ro- President Teddy Roosevelt, who was basically, he's an imperialist in a way, was getting America involved, a bunch of things in the Western Hemisphere, and wanted to build the Panama Canal, which would link then the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. And this was really important for a lot of traders, especially America, because uh, what you could do was if you needed to get stuff sent from the East Coast of the United States to the West Coast, one option that was not available to Americans uh, uh, for that shipping was um, was to do it by boat, right? You could do it by train, but you can only hold so much on a train. You can hold much more on a boat. So the idea was that you'd build a canal in Panama, which is the thinnest part of Central America, and then you could sail a ship, you know, from like the East Coast, from like New York City down south through Panama, and then get somewhere on the West Coast, like San Francisco or LA or something like that. But the Americans wanted to do it, and it'd be an investment because the Americans would control it, and they would uh, um, have tolls and stuff like that. So the people of Panama, a lot of the people in Panama, there was a group, a civil war ends up being by this. A lot of people in Panama saw it as a great investment if the Americans could, you know, come in here and build this. But uh, the Colombian government, who's in control of this, didn't want to. So what basically America did was supported the Panamanians in this civil war so they could fight off and get their independence from Colombia. With, of course, the idea that if they got their independence, then the Americans would be allowed to come in and finance the Panama Canal. And that's what's going on there. So <laughs> they shoot them. Uh, they shoot them. And then they're like, hey. Like, hey, we would support you with building this. And then after they shoot him and wound him, and Columbia's like, no, we don't want this to happen. <laughs> he's like, shoot him again, Panama. Now he's got a shotgun, like a bigger weapon. That's great. I love the, I love the mustache for uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Great meme. Well done. Well done. Great job, mods. This is like the best one, I think. I, I'm loving this stuff. Okay, so here we got a Spain's ultimatum to Mexico's indigenous people it's simple spanish or vanish yeah pretty much so when spain comes in you have the indigenous people they forced a lot of uh, christianity upon them and european ways and stuff like that and for the indigenous people it's like hey you convert or die you basically assimilate or you are gone so yep that sums it up pretty much (laughs) good stuff all right let's go on next it says, I love my pet tiger. Who's stopping the Soviets? You are stopping the Soviets. Oh, we got the tiger. Oh, we got the tanks. <laughs> uh, tiger tanks there. So there we go. I love my pet tiger. Do you either have a real tiger or a tank? I think we, I think we want tanks. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, let's move on. Soldier, are you sure you need to amputate my leg? I only have a headache. Civil War surgeon. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Um, amputations were so common back then because um, Civil War was one of the first wars where you started to get a little bit of better medical treatment. Um, but yeah, uh, amputations were kind of what you did. If you got a severe wound in one of your limbs, you basically had to cut it off because it was going to get infected and it was going to basically die off. And it died off, then it could kill other parts of your body. So that's just why amputation was so common back then. This is also a... Uh, uh, everyone loves Bill Murray, so there you go. You gotta trust him, right? <laughs> All right, what do we got here? We got Stalin and we got Harry Truman. Okay, hey Harry, tell me a joke. West Berlin. I don't get it. I know. <laughs> so this is the Berlin airlift. What happened with uh, after World War II was Berlin was uh, agreed to be jointly occupied by the different allies of World War II. No one nation would control Berlin after World War II. So you had these different segments. Now, the famous thing that happened was the Soviets, uh, they blockaded 
all of the basically all of the access that the like Americans and others had to getting to West Berlin. So they blocked it off. Um, you couldn't go. So what was happening before is West Germany, the like Americans would uh, send stuff through roads and stuff like that, maybe trains across Western Germany into Berlin because Berlin's in the east Eastern Germany and, and Germany was split. Just the whole country was split. West and East. Look at a map of uh, post-war Germany. You'll see what I mean. And when it was blocked, uh, the Americans were unable to get aid to their sector of West Berlin. And to get around that, the uh, Americans did what's called the Ber- what eventually called the Berlin Airlift, where basically, like round the clock, they were having these supply planes um, fly across Western Germany over to Berlin, and then they would drop by plane. Um, stuff and they had an airfield and they would just keep going and basically what it did was showed that the Americans were not going to give up on West Berlin and we're going to keep uh, supplying them to make the Americans it was a political move for the Americans too to make the Americans look good in the eyes of these Western uh, Berliners so they end up uh, Stalin ends up backing off of the the blockade and they were able to go through because the Americans were able to get around it anyway so a little piece of the, the Cold War there alright what do we got when you go to war with Vietnam, <laughs> so you got all your soldiers and then you got just trees for sure. Vietnamese his military history is fascinating and it gets overlooked because they were able to defend themselves constantly against all kinds of uh, things. They always were trying to resist Chinese rule and the Chinese always had a hard time getting control over Vietnam. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, the whole Mongol situation where the Mongols couldn't defeat the Vietnamese. And then you go into more modern history where the Vietnamese were able to defend themselves against two major military powers um, after uh, after World War II. You got the French um, who had controlled the region and they, the Vietnamese were able to kick out the French, French colonialism. And then the Americans come in, right? And were able to defeat the Americans. Um, and so much of it was the Vietnamese terrain. They know how to fight so well in the thick, forested, jungled, humid climate that so, like, all these foreign nations had a nearly impossible time to do. And they used it well. So there you go. Shout out to Chess right there. Okay, what do we got here? When you're chilling out in the Argentinian countryside and notices a suspicious van without a license plan hanging out in front of the house, but you remember that you burned all your SS documents in 1945. So the the, the shout out here is um, a whole bunch of Germans toward the end of World War II, Nazi officials, not, Nazi parties, Nazi members, right? They fled to Argentina where they ended up moving there and a bunch of ranking officials went out there um, and basically were hiding out. That was actually one of the, the, the conspiracies that Hitler might have done that. He might have bailed out, faked his own death pretty much, and then got out there. But a bunch of German officials did do that, and there's a bunch of these artifacts and places where these Nazis were hiding out over, um, over there. So nice, good stuff. I like – we got like big brain memes here. They're like – they're great. Okay, Franz Ferdinand. I'm going to have a parade in this city that hates me. <laughs> the Black Hand. Right. Who wants to join a plot? Now, I don't know what the reference is for the image, but I get the context, historical context. Franz Ferdinand, as you know, is the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. This is in um, 1914. And the Austro-Hungarian Empire was in control just recently of uh, Bosnia. Okay. Bosnia was annexed by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they absolutely the Bosnians absolutely hate this occupation. And in Sarajevo, which is the capital of Bosnia, Franz Ferdinand announces that he's going to make this trip and go and visit the place, which also was bad timing because he decided to, to basically do it on a national holiday for the locals, which, again, I tell my students is like, what if America was just recently taken over by some country, right? Like, North Korea or something, and Kim Jong Un, or uh, uh, yeah, Kim Jong Un decides to parade around in Washington D.C. on the American Fourth of July. That would piss people off. So the Black Hand was a, um, a nationalist organization that organized the assassination, of course, of the of Franz, of Franz Ferdinand, and with the actual killing done by a, a 19-year-old teenager main, uh, named Gavrila Princip. And it was a big conspiracy of, of a bunch of people. And that's what ended up starting the snowball effect into World War One. So that's what's going on there. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. A few more left. Nobody. Hannibal Lecter. Oh, we got the... Oh, man. I got the crown. Do we finish the video with the famous crown? Hannibal Lecter. Because Hannibal has... Uh... Oh, man. How did I even do this? 
has the mask because he was a cannibal. If you know Silence of the Lambs, this basically has nothing to do with history. Has the mask. Is that what you guys are saying? I'm Hannibal the Cannibal now? Great double chin there, too. Not very good. <laughs> Alright, what do we got? Uh, this one's kind of small. Let me blow it up for y'all. I gotta click on this screen. We'll go over here. It's kind of gonna be blurry, but I think we'll do with this. Okay. Where is France? Here. Where is Brazil? Here. Where is Poland? Nowhere. Oh, sad. Sad there. Um, now, who's the kid supposed to be? Oh, this is made by the partition gang. Okay, okay, I see. So, uh, the Poland was split up. So, Poland was an independent nation after World War One, and then it was jointly taken over by Hitler and Stalin uh, just before they started fighting each other. So, they partitioned it, and it wasn't an independent nation. Then it gets back in. That's basically the history of Poland. Poland has always been in a tug of war between Central Europe and Eastern European nations and empires. And is constantly losing independence, is being divided and all that stuff. So it pretty much has become meme-worthy itself. Jeez. Okay. Oh, I love it. Love it already. So there's kind of a running joke in my channel. Because I have a lot of Canadians in our community. And Canadians are always saying they get underlooked as a military power, right? As a, and, and as evidence, you know, they bring in World War One, World War Two, which the Canadians fought very well in. And then cocky that the Canadians beat the United States in the war. And that would be the, in, a, in war. And that would be the war, te- war of 1812. The Canadians love the War of 1812. Americans don't give a crap about it. Pretty much no one in the world gives Canada any, like, praise for it because nobody cares about the War of 1812, basically, especially in America. But yeah, so Canada looking over at the War of 1812. Sorry, Canadians. I know it's just become the running gag of this is you guys are the only ones that care about the War of 1812. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, what we got here? We got Oh, it's young Stalin, young revolutionary. Uh, we got sexy Stalin, as he's called in my class. 119, oh, oh 19, sorry, 1917. Like I guess one thousand nine hundred seventeen percent chance of seizing your girl's means of production. That is lewd, but yeah. So this is young Stalin, right? Before he destroyed his own health, um, <laughs> pretty much. But he was young. People always say, yeah, he was a very attractive younger guy. So nineteen seventeen, the uh, Russian Revolution happens. Two of them happen in that year, and it was all about seizing the means of production. So that's the factories, the farmlands. That's what that revolution aimed to do. So. Here we go. We got young, sexy Stalin, I guess, going over that one. <laughs> All right. What do we got now? Okay. This says, okay, we got Shrek. When you're trying to beat the British and you f- and your Fuhrer tells you to go invade Russia. Quest. I'm already on a quest. Pretty much, yeah, that's what happened. The British or the, the, the Germans were struggling against the British um, in the Battle of um, Battle of Britain. And then... They change, uh, Hitler changes attitude towards, all right, let's, okay, Britain, okay, whatever, let's, let's move on. Let's move on over to Russia. And then you get Operation Barbarossa and the whole backstabbing of the Russians who they had a non-aggression pact with, and they move to the east and invade Russia, which ends up being the beginning of the end for the Germans because the Russians uh, defeat them. So they're already on a quest. <laughs> all right, last one. Okay, last one we got. All right, it's a little bit small. Oh, the text is very small, so let me... Try to blow it up for you if I can. Let's do this. I can, I'll scroll down, okay? Okay, so we got... Oh, Norway. Oh, my gosh. It's in German. I don't know German. Okay, we got Norway here, though. Then the Swedes are showing up. Norwegian, your Zeit has come. Okay, so you got the Germans... My glorious blucher. I don't know what that means. We'll put an end to you once and for all. <laughs> okay. So we got the, the Swedes now are like peeking their head. Because they went they went into, uh, the Nazis mostly went into Norway because they wanted that access to the North Atlantic. Um, Norwegian, what's, what's are you doing? Oh, it's oh, sorry. It's the ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the ship's coming. Yeah, the ship's coming in. Okay, I got gotcha. you. 
Norwegians are coming there. And then, boom! They shoot it down. Nice. This is a Nor Nor Norwegian. I have a Norwegian mod. Guaranteed this came from him. Yep, it's Aragon. He does nothing. Aragon, I remember you did like 10 Norwegian memes. How many memes did you post for this? None. Uh, nope, none of these other ones. Nope, none of these other ones. Oh, he tried to make up. He tried to make up for it by having... Oh, you did the Stalin one. Then you're like, okay, if I do a non-Norwegian one, then I can go ahead and put in the... Uh, I can go ahead and put a Norwegian one. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyways. I don't know what that was. Okay. All right, you all. Great stuff. Good time to go ahead and end here. My dog was messing with my monitor. I don't know if you guys saw that. He's 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 like, no more memes, sir. <laughs> All right, you guys, awesome job. This was uh, this was maybe my favorite one of the memes videos. I thought these were great. I love the historical context in all of them, and it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, there was actually it seemed like there was a lot more I could talk about, which was really good. So good job there. Now, if you want memes to potentially get uh, put into one of these meme videos, be sure to join our Discord server. The link is down below. Um, you can do that, and then there is a memes like uh, place you can put memes in. Uh, it just says history memes under the general chat tab, and you can get that. And then my mods go through them and go through. They need to be, think of it as schoolroom appropriate, classroom appropriate that way. And uh, that is one way you can do that. So if you want to get, if you find good memes, and I love good history memes, I love I love to put these in my lessons in class, and students, you know, hopefully like them. At least the big brain ones like us, right? Okay. All right, let's go and wrap up. Again, on the way out, remember, I just created a gaming channel. The link to it is down below, or just search YouTube for Mr. Terry Gaming. Um, and then eventually I'm going to be shifting stuff. I'm still doing a few things of gaming just on this, on my normal channel, to make sure it gets promoted so, you know, people know about it. And then... Uh, I'll eventually shift over to that. Again, I said the Discord channel is down below, and uh, be sure to join that. Also, a couple things. If you want to get some history-related merch, I have one that's still on sale, the uh, Aztec design, which is very cool. And then the newest one, which is the best thing I think we've ever had, which is the Mario Kart themed World War II uh, shirt through Teespring. And make sure you do that because that campaign won't last forever. Um, go ahead and go down below. You can check that out and just support cool history stuff. Um, that's uh, always fun. Okay, with that, thank you to everybody that has been supporting the channel. Thank you just for being here. And, you know, if you're watching history memes, it means you're obviously into history. If you're into history, you're doing good in life. All right, with that, we'll see you guys later. Bye.